Goodbye, Cape Town. America. New York. There's warm air. Look at this. And that's how I got to 368. Dan, you left out one fundamental secret. The most important oh. one. <laughs> People always told me I should write a book about the comedy of errors that is my life. I made a movie instead. Hello, my name is Daniel Mace. But I prefer Dan. I entered the world alongside my twin sister with a full set of hair. Elvis. Oh. My parents hustled hard to build a comfortable setting for us. We moved home a lot. My imagination told me that I could build a helicopter in the backyard out of dirt, which I'd worked on for months. My dad's friend Steve thought it would be hilarious to fuck with the operation. I didn't think so. Attending a junior school where all the kids spoke Afrikaans besides me left me pretty lonely and I had no friends. No cable TV and got tackled during every rugby practice, even by my own teammates. But for me, it was awesome. I loved being alone in my own head going on epic journeys to the astral plains. I started surfing, grew long blonde locks, I grew a huge head and got beaten up a lot. I moved to a small town called Komiki and joined a gang. Well, like a naughty surfer rat group called 783, where I'd cause all kinds of drama. Start in a TV ad for McDonald's, which is where I saw people making movies for the first time. My ticket to the big league, I'd buy a camera and be made. Found out it wasn't that easy after failing to make anything that looked like it did on the big screen. I started smoking cigarettes and drinking alcohol. I was a kid you would see standing in a group and immediately label arrogant dickhead. I had this fire burning inside of me which told me that I would be rich and famous one day. My grades were shit, my twin sister was excelling while I lived in an academic shadow. But something deep down would keep telling me that I was a gift from God, that the sun shined from my rear end. I continued to live in a fantasy world fueled by the words of Little Wayne at the time. I got rid of my video camera and editing laptop to buy an expensive gift for a girl. I fell in love, chased her to Australia. The girl broke my heart so I took a trip to Zimbabwe near Bali where I got into a bad car accident. I couldn't speak the local language so they took advantage of the situation. Locked me up where they manipulated the story in Indonesia and planted drugs on me. I was able to escape and the South African embassy got my name cleared. Flew back to Bali and got a kiss mark tattoo on my bum because I thought I was the new Michael Schofield of the earth. Flew home, started film school where they tried to mold me into the perfect little film director. I despise any box anyone tried to put me in so I said some ridiculous quote like, those who can do, do, and those who can't teach. They didn't like that and it was best for me to quit. I found myself broke with nothing to show for the past 20 years. My family was over me and I didn't have any real friends. Boo hoo. You know Dan, maybe I can get you a warm bowl of crybaby soup. You know, I'm seeing a pattern emerge here. Let me explain. It sounds like you're waiting for something, like waiting for life to hand you a golden ticket. You're waiting for some lucky break. Some pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Because in this world, this shit doesn't exist. That was a little bit dramatic, but uh, how's about this? Thomas Edison said a quote, often opportunity is missed as it's disguised in overalls and looks like work. So I got it tattooed on my arm. Just imagine living life with that mindset every single day. In my mind, opportunity doesn't exist. It's called work and it's on every corner of every fucking street. Hey, what about that? All right, I see where you're going. Keep, keep going, Dan. I changed everything about myself except that fire that kept burning in me. I started my first company called If Not Why Not that looked at the world of content through new eyes. I ran it into the ground because I knew nothing about this, so I quit. I started a YouTube channel, made my first video, started suffering with depression and anxiety, but used filmmaking as an outlet to transcend through the burdens of my conscious mind. I created a mirror character for myself called Gift. I won my first big award which got me noticed. I signed to my first production house, won two awards at Cannes, got rated as one of six of the best young film directors in the world by Shots Magazine, directed a TV commercial that changed the perception of an entire African country, moved to a new production house where I won another award at Cannes, the press started getting involved and I got big headed, which led me to look at my teenage self in the mirror again. I needed change. Looked around me, the perfect little box I'd created. A house, girlfriend, sausage dog, parents, my twin sister, Everything that makes my life perfect. But being comfortable scares the shit out of me. Around this time, Casey sent me this message. You know, Dan, you should, you should seriously consider coming to New York City. I think you could do great things here. And then I reacted with this message. This went on for about a month until I said, I'm moving to New York. Most people doubted my decision because I'd become a traditional thinker, a qualified TV commercial director, and shouldn't downgrade to a YouTuber. What does this even mean? that I get to stand on some pretentious island high-fiving everyone with a name tag? No, I choose to rather join the fucking tidal wave of young-minded creators and change makers on YouTube. Dan, don't worry about those motherfuckers.
prosperous. People are always jealous of someone who has the gumption to go for it in life because those are the people who don't have the gumption to go for it in life. Like one truth I learned very early in my career is that people who have surrendered their dreams, those are the people who love to discourage people like you from chasing your dreams. So I packed my things and came to a city that makes me feel smaller than I've ever felt. That's not an opportunity, that's a f***ing decision. Swimming off that island wasn't easy, but it helped me find my purpose in filmmaking again. And that's how I got to 3 6 eight. I'm not saying it's the right way, it's definitely not the only way, but that was my journey here. I know I'm always complaining and it seems like a lot of work and that I'm always tired, but at the end of the day, I've been a part of making 30 films in 30 days. I think we're at 31. 31 films in 31 days, and I've never felt so fulfilled, waking up with extreme purpose every morning. This is it right here. The to camera in the Smack it with me. Dude! Local. I guess that was my first video here in New York. When's the next video in New York? No, you're supposed to say subscribe. Oh yeah, don't forget to l smash that like button and subscribe. Smash it, yeah. <laughs> and subscribe to Dan's channel. I don't know, I don't think they'll believe that, dude. It feels like as if I told you to say No, no, that. no, they'll believe it. No, you gotta say it from your heart, bro. Don't forget to subscribe to Dan's channel and like that smash button. <laughs> okay. <laughs>